What's up, everybody? Sean here with another Live to Roll Live. Uh, this week we're talking something super important, uh, which is caregivers. <laughs> uh, and uh, I've had a couple issues with that recently, so that's why I thought it was a good topic. Um, oh, lost Tommy for a second. And we're waiting on I'll Tom to join us in a little bit here. Um, Tom, if you can hear us, you can pop on. Oh, there you go. You're good. Um, it looks like you're muted, but you can, uh, if it's not working, uh, just click back in. Um, but there we go. We'll do a, okay, there you go. You're good. Okay, so yeah, we'll just do a couple quick intros real quick. Wait uh, until Tom gets here, and but we'll get started on the topic. Um, I am Sean, a C5-C6 quad from a snowboarding accident 18 and a half years ago now. Bobby, you want to kick it off? Yeah, no problem. Thanks a lot. I'm Bobby Rohan. Welcome back, everyone. I've been hurt 33 years from a cycling accident, C5, C6, and introduced a good friend of mine who I've known for 33 years now uh, since my accident, Tommy Hollenstein. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. I'm Tommy Hollenstein, uh, C4, 5 quadriplegic uh, from a mountain biking accident in 1985, so that's about 37 and a half years. Oh. Lost him again. He's on the road yeah. right now, trying to get back to his house. So yeah, we'll just uh, let me see. Oops, there we go. That was one. Uh, so we'll just wait on him to get back for a second. Um, but yeah, it's Tommy not, is the man. He was. What's up? Oh yeah. Oh, let's sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just I was just gonna shout Tommy out to you. Yeah, Tommy's the man. He is one of the other. Like Bobby was the first guy I met. There was a quad that came into my room and stuff. But Tommy was always at the hospital too. He'd come into OT, like talk to me and stuff, and like was around since my injury started too. So yeah, big big uh. Dude. And he's the dude that started this this weight the the water skiing, which is like my favorite thing in the world to do right now. So, <laughs> but anyways, let's shout out our sponsors real quick uh, while we are waiting. Uh, so I want to thank our sponsors, Mobility Professionals and urology professionals uh, mobility professionals is a mobility specialist here in southern california so if you're looking for any type of mobility device uh, adaptive uh, anything really commode chairs wheelchairs anything like that uh, give them a call the information is down in the description below they can hook you up for sure they have great people working there great customer service they'll take care of insurance and everything and then urology professionals is their sister company and they are nationwide and they're a catheter company so if you need monthly catheter supplies give them a call they can take care of that for you too um they're great companies great people they're very involved in the community here locally in southern california uh we do a lot for the nonprofit triumph we all are part of so we're just uh great people great companies check them out all right um so i mean we can get into this a little bit um like I said, I've had some care issues right now, and I was just hiring a caregiver um, right now, or in the process of. Oh, I think Tommy is still can, kind of Yeah, connected. it's funny. His screens, I, we can hear his audio driving. Uh, how yeah, do Tommy, I, if you... How do I get my video, my video on? It looks like it's off here on my phone. No, it went black, yeah. yeah. If you want, you, you can... sign off and sign back in? Oops. Yeah, if you want to just click yeah, on and off, that's cool, man. Let me hang out so, and sign back in. Okay. Sorry, you guys, for the technical right difficulties. Shout out, Mom. Thank you. Love uh, <laughs> that you love to watch. And uh, Andrew, thanks for being here. I know you've yeah, been dude, having dude. some rough times. Um, but, yeah, so one of the first things we're going to talk about is just do you use caregivers. Bobby and I are fairly independent for quads, I think, um, and have probably minimal care. But, um, all right, let's see if we got, there we go, got Tommy back. All right. Uh, okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, like I said, we're, we're just, do, so um, for me personally, I do use caregivers just for my bowel care, which is basically four days a week for two to maybe two and a half hours a, a time I need them. So I have very minimal care and help. Uh, I am pretty independent for a quad. Um, uh, but Bobby, what do you, what's your level of care, especially now that you have your colostomy? I know that's probably minimized everything. It did, it did. But actually, you know, with I, I still have about the same, you know, trying to get help all the time. Um, you know, just with my wife retiring just recently, we only have somebody come in three times a week to help out. And beforehand, it was five times a week. You know, it was 
they would come in every morning and help out and then at night my wife and i uh can do it you know i'm pretty independent on helping out with a lot of stuff so all ever since i moved out of my parents house and uh, i've had a caregiver in the morning so when i was living on my own i had a caregiver seven days a week every morning and then i would uh, do my own care and i've been blessed and i've been so lucky that uh for for 33 years i've only had about five caretakers and oh, wow that's I, yeah i got lucky with my first one and she lasted six years and then my second one she lasted uh probably six years too uh six or ten years and then I went through a couple. Um, she she injured her leg and her back, and she helped me find a couple people. They uh, two people kind of filled in for about a couple years, and then I found the fifth one for all the way up until um, until COVID. And then when COVID hit, you know, we were doing it on our own. Didn't bring anybody in. And then now we do have somebody three times a week. So I guess six. So I have had about six. Uh, and I've been lucky that I've found somebody always reliable. Um, the other one I said I had two, they, they were just, you know, that was where I didn't get the most reliable. But other than that, I, I've been blessed and helping out every morning, dictating my care. And yeah, when I got the colostomy bag, it did save a lot of time, but I used that time to have them help me, you know, like clean uh, or, you know, hey, come in, help me hook up this things that I've had a list for. And, yeah. you know, like hey, take this out and oh, can you put this together kind of thing where I know when I look at my, you know, my wife will roll her eyes or um, and then also uh, meal prep so I can cook at night, you know, and be independent to cook with my wife. Nice. That's good, dude. Um, so, Tommy, what about you? I mean, I know you probably have a little bit more care. Um, what, yeah. What's, uh, I yeah, mean, I'm so, C4-5, so, you know, I need full assist transferring and stuff. I mean, I've had, I mean, when I first got home from the hospital, I had great insurance. So I had 24-hour nursing care for the first two years, paid for by insurance. And then, wow. you know, and then it went down to self-pay and a little bit of IHSS. So, I mean, I've got... Right now in the daytime, I've got someone comes at seven in the morning. Uh, sometimes they leave at uh, one in the afternoon. A couple of days a week, they leave at six, and then I've got a night person from eleven uh, p.m. till six a.m. I mean, at night time's the worst. I mean, I've, in the last twelve years, I've had two car accidents where I re-injured my neck a little bit, and guys, so I deal with a lot of physical pain. So I've got to get turned. I mean, I got a crazy sleeping schedule. I don't even go to sleep till three thirty in the morning. And then I go to my left side for literally one hour on the left side. And I sit up straight for an hour and a half, and then back to my left side. So, and then I don't drive either. I, I, I mean, so I've got, you know, I've got vans and all that stuff. You know, for years I was selling wheelchair accessible vans. So I was working full time. So back then I had almost 24 hour care. So I could just have the freedom to go and come as I please, you know, for work. But now, you know, um, the, the, the days that they leave at one o'clock, I just have them set me up for, for food. So I can either, you know, get myself a dinner, you know, have just everything on the refrigerator door, I can microwave or whatever. And I also do have, you know, 13 restaurants within 10 minutes of my house, so I can roll down there and be independent. Yeah, you're in a I've convenient got a spot. That lives with me, but I don't want her doing the caregiving, so. Um, okay. And that way, obviously, I keep my independence. Yeah, no, that that's cool. I know a lot of people that try to separate, you know, their care with family or spousal, whatever, you know, relationships and stuff. So. Um, that, and that works for, for most people, I think. Um, but yeah, no, that's cool. That's, um, and so Tommy, what about you? Have you had long-term care like Bobby, where you kept caregivers for six years and beyond and stuff, or do you kind of cycle you know, through them a little quicker or how, how I mean, has that been? The nighttime I'm care I'm shuffling through. I mean, when I first got injured after, I mean, after the two years ran out, I had two guys, which I never had guys for the first couple of years, you know, anyway. But I had both. I had a night guy. I had two guys that worked for 20 years straight until they both built up their own personal businesses. One was an air conditioning guy. One was a cabinet guy. Uh, so I mean, I got lucky there. 
know, for 20 years, I didn't have to rotate at all. And uh, now I've had the same girl during the day for, for like four or five days a week for the last eight years, which has worked out phenomenal. So I'm really blessed there. And then the night person, um, I've had a, I've had one of the girls like 15 years and then one for the last two years. Um, so I've, I've had to switch out here and there, you know. Um, it's, it's tough to find reliable help for sure, especially during the pandemic when we was getting all that free money. There was, you know, I was trying to hire during that time. And I, I, where I would usually get 30 responses on a, a Craigslist ad within 15 minutes of running the ad. I wasn't getting any for days. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's, it's a lot harder. It's starting to get a little bit better, but I still have noticed. That, yeah. And the, the price, just the general base price, I feel like, has increased. Like, you can't hire caregivers anymore for what you could pre-pandemic prices. Like, it's a few dollars more an hour yeah. now. Like, everything is, like, across the board, I think. I, well, at least for me. That's what I have found um, in trying to hi hire people. So, And like you said, because all, all the free money was out there, and everybody, like, just caregiving became a premium, and... Uh, yeah, <laughs> the price went up. <laughs> um, but for me personally, I have had a few. I think the longest caregivers I had for probably two or so, two to three years. Um, I had a guy that worked for me for a couple years. He was okay. Um, I've had a couple girls that went, yeah, like two to three years, I think, is about the most um, I've kind of kept. And that's just because I think like they've either moved on. A lot, like I said, I don't need a lot, a lot of hours. So sometimes it's hard. You know, because they can't, it's, I can't pay somebody enough to be a sustainable, like they have to have multiple other clients. They, they can't just, just help me usually. Um, yeah, and but I think that's, that's the hardest problems. thing is when, in, when you're needing not as many hours, it's hard to, to hold on to that. And that's why, that's why when you go to nursing facilities uh, and ask for, uh, to hire someone, they're, they're saying minimum four hours. You know, we're not going to yeah, come out. Yeah, a lot of places minimum. say that. Yeah. And so yeah. then you're, then you're, you know, using your own resources. Like I know uh, you're a big fan of Craigslist, Sean, and, and, you know, also putting out ads out there, putting out feelers. And I think, so, you know, and I, that's how I did mine, putting out the feelers out there and just got lucky so many times. And, and just by asking a couple people, like, do you know anybody? I'm like, actually I do, you know, and uh, I always find this, uh, I, I got lucky finding a mom that could use some extra work when the kids and family are at work and she has time in the morning. So I, you know, that's how I got lucky, you know, for a couple of those times. So that, that definitely paid off. And then one time uh, somebody came in for my daughter and uh, she knew, she goes, oh, you're a C5, six quad, huh? And I'm like, no way. So she had taken care of quads and she worked for a nursing agency. But then I just, at the end of the night, I asked her when she was going home, uh, I said, hey, would you be willing to like work off the books and I hire you? And she's like, heck yeah, let's go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she picked that up right away. So, you know, she goes, I'd rather make more money, you know, for a couple hours working with you than four hours at it. I would make the same amount. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, yeah, I've had pretty good luck finding good help here and there, but the problem is, yeah, like I found like some really good nursing students that were like going through school, but again, like had to move on because they like were going through school and like yeah. other things like that. So like, you know, um, but, but I still have pretty good relationships with most of my caregivers that I've had in the past, you know, like I can usually call upon people. Like if I, like when I'm in a pinch, when I need somebody, you know, like call and ask around and usually willing to come back. And that's one of the things I want to talk about too today is, you know, your relationship with the caregiver and like communication, stuff like that. Because I know a lot of people can get abrasive with caregivers. Caregivers can be abrasive, you know, like sometimes it can be a little bit, um, you know, not the greatest situation, or especially if your personalities clash slightly, you know, or some, whatever the situation might be. Um, so I, I've typically got along with most people, but um, have you guys, had any, Bobby, you've had only like a handful of super long yeah. ones. So I doubt you've oh, had yeah. any bad. It just kept coming later and later, never. You know, nothing like Andrew in our chat, you know, he's had, uh, he said some bad luck. Robbed. Robbed. Yeah, I've heard of people being robbed. They have just like yeah. stealing stuff, money and stuff from their houses. Yeah. 
that's the biggest um, one is getting you know shorthanded or them taking stuff from you that is the biggest one but no i haven't i'm sure you know maybe you have or tommy yeah tommy have you had any any bad situations or anything like that in the years like hired somebody that uh either you just butted heads with or they stole or you know something anything like that oh crap oh hold on one second i'm sorry I, you're on i got it my, that was my fault you're good you're good sorry you know, there's only one real bad experience i can even remember is back I, you know, I was living in an apartment down in west la it was a night shift guy and i had no idea this guy and i'd hit the buzzer to get turned in the middle of the night right and all of a sudden the guy comes back and he's soaked and wet and I'm like, what the hell and money was missing it turned out the guy was a damn junkie and he'd be disappearing in the middle of the night with my money and going to score and coming back and uh so other than that no not too bad i mean i you know when i do my interviewing i do them down to like a mcdonald's or something away from the house and then if i like the person i do a, a background check and then we do a trial run okay so you do a pretty good amount of vetting then um yeah a bit. before before hiring yeah that's good um because that was one of the things i did want to ask you guys about bobby are you pretty much the same like when you have hired people that, like i know that one you kind of stumbled upon she was through an agency and stuff um but especially going through craigslist you probably have to do a little bit more of that background vetting you have the that chance of the sketchier situation recently yeah. i've started using care.com more where they do like you know a pre-screen background check that's like a basic thing um, and a few things like, so I feel a little more comfortable when I'm hiring off of there than completely randoms off of Craigslist, but I've had great luck, so great luck with Craigslist. So, I mean, I can't complain too much, uh, but yeah, Bobby, did you say you do the vetting? No, I, yeah, I haven't had to do all that background or even do an interview with, uh, somebody at McDonald's. I've been lucky that way that, you know, and, and when I've gone out of town, I've kind of used that's why I don't use, uh, I haven't used Craig Legs when I went out of town. I, I more call a bunch of agencies seeing if they have somebody to hire for cash. And usually I, I've always been able to find it and if they work for them, they must be okay. So I've always had good luck that way. And then everybody that's worked for me was either, you know, I had, I had multiple people tell me, yeah, this is a good person. Don't worry about it. You know, I, you know, one was, uh, I, I, uh, I worked with this gal and she said, Oh, my, mo-, you know, my first one that I got, Oh, my mother would probably be wanting, you know, willing to do that. Cause her, uh, her main job was working at a nursing facility as an aide. So that, that kind of just helped out. And she made, she made more in her three hours that she worked every morning with me than she did almost all day at being an aide at this little nursing center. So, um, so I didn't have to bed them, and then a cup, and then of course I met then Shirley after that, and didn't have to do that because she worked for a nursing agency, and then whoever she gave me a couple people after her, you know I trust Shirley, and so I kind of didn't have to go down that meeting at McDonald's or Starbucks kind of thing. Yeah, I've done the meeting at different places too, and went and met people off of Craigslist. Um, um, during the pandemic, I started doing more of like I would, you know, have the, like a text conversation, have a phone conversation, and then we do like a video chat. And then like, by you know, once you've talked to somebody on the phone, I feel like and then you video chat, like you kind of you can get a pretty good feel of like, you know, their personality and stuff. So that's what I was doing during COVID. And I've kind of c- continued sort of doing um, it just that was easier for COVID and it kind of still works now. It makes it, makes it easier than driving to a location to, you know, meet um, in person and stuff. So I don't know. That's the <laughs> modern technology helps a little bit with that. But for me, yeah, I, oh, I, that's pretty much my whole background. Like I haven't, I haven't, I've never ordered a background check on somebody besides just what they do on care.com. So, I, you know, I've never gone outside of that, but, uh, but yeah, <laughs> um, I, I've, I've been pretty lucky, but that's what, so that's what I'll, I'll just no, get into this right now. Check. Yeah. Why is that? <laughs> you know, years ago, Sorry. I was at this convention down in San Diego and I ran into some quadriplegic guy. We get to talking. 
and I got to talk to his caregiver, and they had just moved out here from Ohio. And uh, and I, I just said, well, how did you originally get the job? He said, I'm going to be real honest with you. He said, I used to be a drug addict. And he said, I used to, you know, look for quadriplegics or people with spinal cord injury because I knew you guys had sleeping pills. A lot of you guys dealt with pain, had pain pills. And I would purposely go looking for that job. And he said, <laughs> and that way I could call a doctor up and say, oh, Jimmy tried to open the bottom himself and spilt it. And I'm thinking, holy shit, are you kidding? The guy went that far into looking like that. So when I heard that story, it just blew me away. So from that point on, I thought I'm doing backgrounds on everybody that comes through my house. That's that's interesting. Yeah, that's cra- that's crazy that he was like honest enough to tell you that afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, yeah, it was so crazy. That, I can't believe it. Hopefully, he was reformed and everything now. Um, but yeah, so that's what the the person I just had. Like, I had a guy that was working for me. I had found. What's that? Sorry. <laughs> or Tommy. Uh, but I, so I, I had a guy that I had found on on, on Craigslist. I cannot how calculated this is. You know, but it's, you know. Yeah, no, that is pretty scary, man. Yeah, I think Tom's got a slight delay. But that's cool. That that is scary. So that's what I I had hired a guy off of Craigslist. um, And so he's somebody that claimed he has like a whole bunch of people. No, you just have a lot of lag, Tommy. (laughs) Um, But he claimed to have a whole, he like actually had like a small caregiving agency basically he ran he had multiple caregivers that worked for him worked for other quads other elder like he had a bunch of people supposedly all through the inland empire area here that he was helping um and but he was one of those people that was very like the first day you know he talked about how good of a caregiver he was like the whole time he was there (laughs) so like i don't know for me that's always weird when somebody like completely keeps telling yeah. you how good they are at their job yeah. and how smart they are that's and stuff like that. That's a bad <laughs> sign, yeah. So so that was one of my red flags from the start and I kind of knew like, all right, this guy's a little weird, whatever. And I only used him sporadically like when I would need him. Um, just for when I, I couldn't get somebody else to fill in. And, um, the, and so, I don't know, there was a lot of weird things he would do and stuff. But also, so what happened one day when he was here last week was he was spraying the counters to clean the counters with a Clorox spray. And he was kind of going a little wild with it. And it was it was hitting me in the arm and in my neck. Like there was Clorox spray. And my toothbrush is right there on the counter. And I just, I did not say, I did not blow up. I did not like, what, what the fuck are you, I, I, nothing like that. I was like, hey dude, can you actually just be careful with that spray? I'm getting a little mist on my side here. And he looked at me like, do you, and, and actually said, do you think I'm an idiot? And he walked out of the room. He came back in. He said, no, no, no. I can't handle this disrespect. <laughs> Went back into my room again, grabbed his keys and his phone, and walked out of my house. And literally, that's all he said. And I, I at first thought he was joking until I saw him grab his keys. And I was like, wait, he's serious right now? So I don't know. I think he may have been a drug addict as well. I have no idea. That was just weirder than anything I've ever experienced. <laughs> um, and he just left me sitting on the toilet. Luckily, we started the bowel care already, and I was going with my bowel care um but i still need to do like the stimulation which i can do on my own with the tool it's just a lot harder it's not as effective because i can't massage my stomach while i'm doing the stimulation which i normally would do with help um anyways it just led to like not feeling good for the day feeling had to we ended up having to go get my uncle to help me get into the shower for we had to pick him up from work it is the whole pain in the ass ordeal um to to deal with uh so that's why I decided to do this show this week <laughs> uh, because like I said there were those red flags like when somebody's really talking about how smart they are how good they are this and how like all this stuff like to me that's a sign that like you know you shouldn't have to tell somebody how amazing you are <laughs> like just do a good job you know and that, that that'll do the trick <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, we had a we had a dog trainer that was like that and just said how amazing he was and when he left I'm like yeah no no, you're not that amazing when you have to tell me a hundred times uh, you know so um you know so we have a couple tips you know of hiring caregivers like you know interviewing them away from your house or using zoom uh, video chat to maybe um, bed your caregivers you know that's a great tip and doing maybe a back background ch- check looking at certain websites to how to find the uh, good caregivers like care.com here in the u.s or craigslist looks like jj mac 
said there's another um, uh, another place that they used like yeah, uh, called Gumtree, which I guess yeah. is similar to Craigslist. So, you know, those are some those are some great tips. Any other ones that you can think of, Tommy and um, Sean, that have worked, and then we can move on. How do you keep your caregivers and the right attitude to have during the day, so you don't have the "I'm out of here" because you you know you're disrespectful to me. But anything else you can think of that you use to hire caregivers? Uh, besides that, I would say just word of mouth, like you know, just knowing other people right. um, in the community trying to find and then I've actually never gone through an agency agency like calling an agency and hiring just because of the increased price but um, I know a lot of people that have and that's worked for them and it works well but Tommy do you have anything to add on that no I mean like the main thing is like you said the you know referrals from friends and stuff you know I have called a lot of nursing schools I was never successful with that um, at all I don't know why but I mean it, you know they would Say so, yeah, they're gonna send some people to call me, but it, it just never happened. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've heard of caregiver.com, but I, I was really lucky so far with the Craigslist, you know. But uh, like I said, I do, you know, I do do the interviewing and definitely do background checks. Once I know I'm gonna hire somebody for sure, you know, and then it's just about treating them right and you know being respectful and you know, hopefully you give match personalities and especially if you've got other people in the house as well, they gotta kind of match up with that and just have a real clear job description um you know have that written down when it comes to the job description what you know i've got a list on my refrigerator to things to check a checklist to kind of look at before leaving the house in the morning and before leaving in the afternoon or you know to, to, to look at in the morning when you get there things that you know because i you know got you know a little, little bit of light housekeeping some animals in the backyard that need to be fed stuff like that stuff that even before i get up so all that's just kind of real clear you know real clear and, uh, you know, those are, um, you know, great things. My, my thing is when I've had a couple new ones or when I started using uh, and before we have our caregiver get on board and come help us, it's, it's how much to pay them. And I don't know if you guys experience like do you pay, do you have like the starting rate, Sean or Tommy, or do you fluctuate on the person at all? Like, Ooh, this one seems really good. So I'll give like maybe 50 cents, a dollar more, or this one I'm not sure about. So let me just start at this base rate, you know, the bottom of my bottom. Um, so now my base rate has been since COVID, um, the cheapest I've really been able to find, especially for leading so little hours is 20 an hour, especially because I'm only getting like two hours to two and a half hours. Um, and that's like the cheapest I've pretty much found that somebody's willing to come for two hours. Um, but I actually do have the one really good caregiver I have who is actually, she was an RN in Mexico, but like here she's just a caregiver, unfortunately, you know, because like the schooling doesn't come over, but she's a really good caregiver. She's really knowledgeable. She's like literally like having a nurse here. She's great. Um, so she actually asked me for a slight increase in pay and I was happy to do that for her. Um, but I'm still paying everybody else the 20. <laughs> uh, but and it's even only a couple dollars extra, but it's still like for me, it's worth having that good, consistent help. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. she can only do like two days a week for me, but that's still I'm happy to get those two days when I can to have like high quality help. Um, but so that's my rate. Uh, and yeah, that's a, <laughs> um, and I usually like so also when I do the travel, so when I, I mentioned this on the last show, we hired a caregiver when we were in Houston that I hired to help me and Tom. So we hired her for four hours, but the way we were able to set up our care, we were done in like two and a half, three. But I still like told her from the start, you know, like I'll pay you out the four hours. Like just because we want to get done faster, doesn't, you know, like I hired for that amount of time, I'm going to pay you for that amount of time. Like, because that basically we each needed two hours of care she just was able to overlap us and do it faster so like it just uh you know stuff like yeah, that i always would just reward definitely if you're paying private i've always had the sense of sometimes i've got, had to leave out the door like an hour before they were going to leave that day if i couldn't think of something for them to do in the house or i didn't need them in the house because i was leaving I always pay them for the full amount that they were expected to work. Um, 
you know right so that's how you know those are some tips to you know keep your care takers which we can get in here in a in a few minutes but yeah tips are always uh, is definitely paying your your care for what they were thinking they were going to make for that day yeah no that's a that's it's only fair you know like because you're not going to call some have somebody come out and then like short their hour like it's just fair if you have them come out for that certain amount of time and that's part of the communication you just like get all that stuff out in the air first um so um yeah, I think that's just good. And like we were talking about before, we can kind of get into the keeping care, I think, a little bit. Well, just real quick, um, Connie Jones, I, I think she's uh, not too far from my house. Hi, Connie. I think I, I'm, I know her. Um, she also said, ask your um, PTs or primary care doctor staff sometimes. That you might know, help. You know, know. That, that's when you're in need of caregivers, and I think this is a great idea, uh, Connie, ask anybody. Ask as family members, as friends, ask, you know, whoever you can think of, do you know of anybody? Do you know of anybody? And because that travels, you know, that gets a lot further of the word of mouth and like, it, you just, that's how I found my people. Do you know somebody? I was at work and I, she, you know, just a friend of my uh, coworker said, what's wrong? And I'm like, I gotta find a caregiver. I'm moving it, I'm moving out of my, my family's house and I need somebody. So they were like, yeah, my mom, I was like, that's how quick it happened. One, I asked one, or she saw my face and I just, the first person I was saying, I'm about to move out and blah, blah, blah. And here I am, got a caregiver for the next six years. So that's how easy it fell in my lap. And I know it doesn't work for everybody, but you know, it was just, and I now I would always think like, gotta ask anybody. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. If you're looking, it's important just to put those out there. Put, you know, like, just ask friends. You can throw it on social media. You might have somebody that's like, oh, yeah, I have somebody in the area. Um, so always try to use any resources we can, especially from our community. I feel like definitely helps. Um, but um, so, yeah, um, do you, what, also we can talk about just like, the communication and keeping a caregiver and stuff like that because that's what i feel like you always want to be respectful to your caregivers um and uh no matter if that's outside care or family friend help um which i think we'll get into a little bit too like using family help versus outside care here in a second but that's one thing no matter who it is it's really important just to try to be respectful and i know sometimes like that's probably my most frustrating time of the day is doing my bowel care in the morning. That's when I'm the most irritable human being that I am like of the day. So I have to try to make sure that I am, you know, like just always being respectful and nice and stuff. And uh, I don't try, I try not to talk down to people or treat them, you know, like that's why I, w I was really kind of, I honestly thought the guy was joking to me when he was like, I can't take that disrespect <laughs> because I was like, I li like I, I think there was even a please in there when I asked him. I was like, "Can you please just you know watch where the spray goes?" <laughs> so, um, but hey, some people's uh, views on respect are different than others, I guess. So maybe communicate with that person and figure out how to best go about that in the future. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now, now let's talk about we got our caregivers. You know. The start of it you know how do you set it up you know now that you've hired you know how do you approach your care i mean obviously you know one thing about being paralyzed and being actually out there in the public actually in your own home family friends or a hired caregiver you have to dictate your care you have to be your own advocacy and it is very important that you know you definitely set it up right that uh you know, does, I guess I always have the, the fear of, does this sound, maybe it's gonna be too overwhelming. So I start out slow, like it's just I gonna be a few it. things like this. And then we start building up as I get more comfortable with the person. Is that how you guys are? And uh, how do you approach your first few weeks of a caregiver, a new caregiver? Tommy, you can go ahead and go first if you want. I mean, first off, I mean, I do a couple of days of training. Um, you know, even before I hire somebody full time, I say, you know, I mean, once I've gotten past the 
want the uh, you know, the, the background check and stuff, and then and we, we figure it might be a match. I'll have them come in and do anywhere from three to five days of training um, to see how, if our personalities really do match up for one. And they can see everything that the other caregiver is doing and come and mimic that and, and really get the full routine down because, you know, especially when, you know, when I didn't have my fiance living here, you know, all the little things just set me up for success yep. for the day. Once they left, making sure I've got three bottles of water sitting in the counter with three straws. All my remotes are on my bed. I, you know, all that type of stuff. And then you know, the balcony. I mean, I've done. You know, I shower every day. I've got a roll-in shower. You know, but I try to set them up for success as well. Even with the cleaning products I have, everything is simple. You know, I've got a, ro- a roll-in shower. I've got a ceiling lift. You know, things that make their job as easy as possible if I can. Um, and then, like I said, write it down, make it clear on, on the job description. And then, you know, slowly add things like Bobby's saying. I, I get that for sure. Um, you know, I mean, some people, they do have helped me in the studio painting and some people I don't. You know, I just I don't trust them to that level at, at all. Um, but it's, you know, and then it's just about treating them with respect. And, uh, and, and, and you know, because I'm hoping for long-term caregivers. And I, you know, I talk when I when I'm doing my hiring, I'm also I'm telling you, you know, I'm looking for somebody a minimum of two to three years or more, if possible, you know. So there's, I mean, right from the get go, um, there's a pretty clear understanding, um, and hopefully then it works out. But it's just, you know, about respecting them and, you know, making making the duties clear, so you're not adding too too much, you know. Right. I think you said something very. Per, per, profound in the sense of setting them up for success. And one yeah. thing that we have to realize, and I know what there's, there's some people out there, they probably don't know where half of their crap is that they get into their house and they go somewhere and then you get a new person coming in. It's like, I don't know, it's somewhere over there. The four by fours, I, I have some somewhere. Can you look for it? You know, I don't, I've never been a believer in that. And, you know, when I first got my first caretaker, you know, every night I would lay out my clothes. I would get all the, everything that I needed for that day ready that I can say, all that stuff's in the bathroom. The clothes are right here. This is right there, this, this, this. And then I have two things in the refrigerator. If you can make those things for me, they're right there on the door and marked, you know? So I always felt like that was important when I first started and it worked well because all of a sudden, you know, after a while, they're like, you know, you don't have to lay out your clothes every morning or at night, you know, I can go get it in your closet. I'm like, okay. And then they kind of knew what I liked and what I don't like. And so they just kind of just pick it out for me. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll wear that today. So, you know, over time it did help out, but I think setting them up for success and knowing where your crap is, is important. And I think that's really awesome. Uh, uh, well, well said, Tommy, how about you? Sean. So the knowing where your crap is is one thing I have issues with here now because I don't put my stuff there. My stuff is in places I can't physically even get to and reach like in this house. Um, so that's one thing that kind of sucks. Uh, and I try to remember where everything is and tell them, but like half the time, like I have to be like, yeah, you have to ask my grandma because like, I literally don't know. She puts it all away and I don't know where it is. <laughs> like, so, uh, uh but besides that, what I was going to say, going back, I do the same thing like you guys do. Um, I, I hire somebody um, to come in, uh, or when I hire somebody, I stick with the basics at first. I pretty much just have them doing all the uh, the main things I need, the bowel care, the shower. And then as that routine gets settled in and we get good at it, I kind of add the little extra things like, you know, pick up this. I'm gonna, can you clean, like, also put this over here each day, little stuff like that. Um, to just continue to add to the uh, to, to, to it but not not like continuously but just till I get to like what I pretty much need all the base things I need um, and so that's pretty that, that I do the same thing as you like so same thing you guys um, and I think that helps I try I used to do a list but I haven't had my printed my list and don't have it out anymore but I did always still used to have like a checklist of everything um, that made it easier to remember and uh, I might go back to that, but right now the the couple people that I have helping me are good and don't need anything right now. They're already dialed in. I am hiring somebody right now for a day or two a week, uh, but um, we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> you know, the one thing you guys did talk about is having 
you know, I learned in the hospital to make sure, I mean, I only had two drawers in the hospital, but they told me, know exactly where everything is in your drawer so that when you're laying on that bed, you can tell them exactly where everything is. So, I mean, I've got my closet pretty well organized in different drawers with my gauze, my supplies, whatever, you know, my, my underpads, whatever, um, tape, all that stuff. I mean, I could tell them, okay, look in the closet in the back drawer in the, the back wall, top left drawer, third one down or whatever. And, I mean, that's important to be able to, especially because, I mean, I, I never, you know, I've been very active all my life. Never had any any problems until, I was that six years ago? I was stuck in bed for two months. I had fractures of my sacrum and was bed bound for two months. I'd get up to shower every day. So it came in so clear and important that time for me to be able to explain or just tell everybody okay, where it is. And then... Then they know too. Once I mean, if it's the same routine, the same spot, it becomes habit for them as well, which makes makes it easier. Like I said, you know, everything you can do to make the job easier for the caregiver as well, the longer you're going to be able to keep them for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, that's I actually have one of my caregivers from last summer, Christy, in the chat. She was actually a great caregiver, uh, super good. So no, no crap talking about Christy. She was the one that moved on to nursing school and will be an RN soon enough. Uh, uh, um, yeah. So anyways, uh, so yeah, I, like I said, I've had good caregivers and I've found good people. Just, uh, not anybody. I've never had anybody that stay as long as you guys, but, uh, we'll see maybe here in the future. <laughs> Uh, the one so that I have right know. now is really good and been working for over a year now. So hopefully I can, that'll work out for a while. And then good I think start. the biggest trick of keeping your caregivers is think about treating them, the, treating them the way you want to be treated. And I know that I've heard a lot of horror stories out there where some some people are just jerks to just everybody, you know not just their their caretakers but it could just it just seems like when you get used to somebody and things are not going kind of like what you experienced sean the guy spraying something he just couldn't even take that you know and not that you did anything wrong but what i always try to do is set up for the day of hey you know no matter what's bugging me i'm not going to take it out on my caregiver you know whatever is you know whatever they're doing wrong i'm going to take a couple seconds Take a deep breath and then like, you know what? Hold on. You're not quite doing it right. Let's 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 back up and try it this way because it, it, you're just getting, you know, let's just say, and I had one gal for a very short time that just put piss everywhere every time she took off the night bag. And it was just like, I'm do it. <laughs> I told you how many times, you know, and it just, it was frustrating, but no matter how many times I did not want to yell because that's not how you keep people. And, you know, I always have respect of please and thank yous go a long way, you know, asking them how their day is. And some days you can tell that your your caregivers are in a rush or for whatever reason, you just can tell something's off, you know, and I kind of just let that happen. Let them have their bad day as long as you're not going to put it on me. And I'll, I'll, just, I'll be quiet here. And it just seems like I know you don't want to talk today, but as long as I get my care, that's all that matters. Yeah, no, exactly. That's a, uh, and that's for so that's my problem. So when I start to get a little bit irritated, I just get quiet. I'm just like, and I and I try so like, cause I don't want to be, you know, I'm not gonna say anything mean, but I'm just like, so I just I won't say as much, and I'll just like try to very, just distinctly and briefly explain what I need. Um, but uh, that doesn't happen with that many caregivers. That's usually just like. Yeah, that's. <laughs> uh, but I've had the same thing where I've had people like you try to explain something to over and over, and they just can't quite get it, like spray and pee everywhere or whatever stuff like that. Um, and that's hard. So, but. Um, uh, so what else we got? Um, so yeah, well, let's let's talk about the family versus outside help for people because a lot of times when you're newly injured, the first help you're gonna have is family. Pretty much, that's like most people end up having family help in the beginning. Um, did you guys have family help in the beginning and then just move on? Uh, do you still ever have family help? Um, I know Tommy said you care, you separate your fiance and caregiving. Um, so Bobby, I, I know Ellen helps you with a little bit. 
Uh, well, but, it helps me with a lot right now. And oh, okay. so the way I try, we, we started out, our, our marriage started out as, yeah, absolutely no help unless an emergency. Um, and then everything was great until COVID. And then COVID hit, lost my caregiver. I, you know, we were both kind of a little like, okay, instead of going out, finding somebody new during this time, you know, she's, she was fine. And like, like we said, having the me bag, you know, definitely, definitely saved that part of it in the sense of, okay, I'll just do it. It will save us money because I have to pay out of pocket. And I, you know, my wife and I made too much that we don't get any assistance um, that a lot of people get, or like probably what you get, Sean. So, you know, everything was coming out of our pockets and, you know, it just kind of helped out. Uh, during this time of having this wound, yeah, it's, um, we have help coming in and it's still a lot for her and it's still affecting our marriage a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm not, it's not ruining it or anything, but it doesn't help. It, it's, it's difficult. I don't want her as that, that person and it's going to wear her out. And, you know, I see signs of that. And so that's the hard part, but we, you know, we can go and blast out, but all I'm, it's kind of weird because I lay there and then I just need somebody for a half an hour. So we're having a hard time thinking about how to balance that. We do have somebody coming in three times a week uh, to do uh, two hours of work in the morning. So that I do take that time to get a lot more done on my washing up and care and shower and, you know, help me organize some stuff. So that does help, but it's hard when you have family. And I, at the beginning, I did have family and I think it stunt somewhat my growth of being independent right away because I was with them for three and a half years after my injury. And I think, you know, my independence didn't come along as quickly until right after I got out on my own and my family wasn't doing everything for me. And all of a sudden I'm doing it all myself. And it was like, wow, now I'm really independent. You know, that's how it helped, you know, it started. And I know my wife is on a website called WAGS on Facebook. Women, yeah. uh, wives of girlfriends and wives and girlfriends. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. spinal cord injury. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I hear some horror stories, and probably eighty percent of the of the women that are on there talk about that they're the main caregivers, and it's it's it sucks, and it doesn't sound like it's a fun fun trip i'll tell you that yeah no definitely um um yeah that seems like it'd be hard for sure and even so like i had experience with that for a while um when i was living with my girlfriend and she was full-time my caregiver as well um she, i had her helping me with my morning care but typically like the rest of the day i tried not to ask for much you know and i tried to also you know, contribute to things around the house as well, like feeding the dogs and different stuff like that, you know, to not burden her with everything um, with that stuff, you know, because like we both have lives and different things we need to do. So it's just, uh, yeah. Um, but Tommy, what do you, uh, do you want to talk about your yeah. situation or? Well, I mean, and... I mean, don't get me wrong. If Lulu needs to jump in, she'll jump in. I mean, you know, I, I learned early on, I mean, there was a class when I was in, still at Northridge Hospital, Nancy Kennedy came in, some of you guys may know her or not, and some talked about how that ruined her marriage, her husband was her caregiver. And, I, and I, I'll never forget that, and I've watched my friends lose marriages over that. But I mean, so thank God I had good insurance for the first two years, which at that point built me up more independence, because I could only shrug my shoulders when I got home. I didn't have the movement I have now, so, um, you know, I'm definitely way more independent now. And then. The more hours you spend alone, the more independent you're going to get. You're going to get forced to. Yep. Yes. I mean, even COVID, it forced me to get even more independent, which was great. It was awesome. Um, but, uh, you know, and then, uh, I mean, so as far as the family members, but yeah, it's, I mean, every girlfriend I've ever had always said, well, let me be your caregiver, save the money, this, that. And they mean well, they mean right. You know, I mean, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I've done trips to Vegas where it's just Lulu and I or, you know, I actually yeah. in the past. You know, I put a room over there that has a ceiling lift. I, I drive over there with my own shower chair. It's got an adjustable bed, a queen size adjustable beds, two of them in there. And you just turn that into, a, you know, a, a fun activity when it comes time to the showers. Well, you know, um, shower together. I mean, it just, if it was going to come down to that. 
but I mean, you know, and but Lula will definitely jump in. But I mean, I try not to, you know, have it be my primary. I mean, I'm I'm willing to do whatever I can financially to bust my ass to, you know, hopefully, you know, be able to afford it for the rest of my life. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. That's uh, that's cool. And then in the beginning, did you have family helping? Like I know that was quite a while ago. Uh, did you, or did you originally just go straight into having caregivers? back uh, when you were first injured out of the hospital and stuff? No, when I was first injured, I had I had good nurse. I had a 24-hour nursing care. Oh, that's right. I you, had had, you had insurance that covered 24-hour care. So, I had so you never had to rely. Shift. No, and it was crazy because there, I mean, back then it was, you know, 1985. And I figured out what the policy was. It was about $22,000 a month, you know, RNs and LVNs. And uh, they were sending me old ladies that, you know, were, and some people didn't even speak any English at all. And I'm thinking... I figured that out pretty quickly. I said, "Hey, look!" I said, "I told the company, I said, look, you got exactly three weeks to find young girls that you know." I said, "I've already got one mom. I don't need to show up at a restaurant with you know some old lady that's that's you know in in whites." And I would not let them wear nursing outfits at all, either. You know. So next thing I know, I've had all these young girls, girls, and they were training young girls. So when I was out in public, it it felt more like I was with a friend, you know. But I mean, thank right. God for that nursing policy because. You know, I, I didn't never want to be a burden to my family. That was the first thing I'm thinking about. You know, but also, you know, back in those days, you spent six months in the hospital rehab. You know, doing whatever you could to get, you know, more independence and get whatever you could. Um, so things were a little bit better then. And then, like I said, that nursing care came in handy for the two years. When it ran out, there was a, a big reality, you know, a big reality check. But by that point, I had routines down and stuff like that. So I kind of a lot of the courts out of the you know out of the way you know and by that point too i was also in the medical sales and stuff so i was getting access i mean when i first got injured there was only one power wheelchair company ever since jennings they're not even around anymore and two lightweight chairs you know sunrise medical which was quickie and uh quadra out of westlake you know so things have really changed i mean there was no touch phones you know i mean i had to yeah. put a pen in my mouth and write girls numbers down if i met them in the mall you know or, <laughs> We learn how to memorize the shitload of numbers, you know, <laughs> and addresses, and stuff like that. It's just, you know, uh, so I mean, you know, now we could get set up for success with all the technology. I mean, Alexa, hell, that thing comes so handy for operating my bed, thing in the house, you know. Yeah, no, I have know. one in my, I have one in here and one in my bedroom, and there, I have so many smart plugs and devices. Everything's plugged into it. Right there, so. you go. Exactly. Um, yeah, no, that's cool, man. Um, and I was going to, uh, Connie in the chat said that, yeah, her husband helps oops, uh, helps with her bowel care occasionally, but yeah, definitely a romance killer. Uh, yeah. But like, if it's not your, see, I just think it's hard to rely on somebody all the time for your care that's your significant other. Um, if they're helping you on occasion when you need it for travel, different stuff right. like that, Absolutely. I feel like that's a good situation um, to be able to have. All right. But um, anything else? Uh, what other, um, we're kind of wrapping up the hour here. Um, you guys have any extra advice, tips or anything for finding um, you know, somebody or uh, just any, of the, uh, any extra little tidbits of information? I think, you know, you know just being yourself and uh, you know, definitely you know, when, when you do find somebody, you know, first starting off slow, get to know them, build a relationship like you would with anybody going to a new job or having a, a new friend, you know, you don't just take off from zero to one. I, I, I think starting off slow is a good idea. And then make sure you have a plan, you know, each and every day of what you're, what you're wanting, you know, and that kind of helps out and write it down and kind of it helps out the situation throughout the day you know hiring that's uh, i'm gonna give that to you guys yeah uh, uh yeah i mean uh tommy do you want to go or i can let yeah, you go ahead go ahead up. i'll let you go and then i'll go with last either way yeah i was gonna say for hiring i just say like for one just personality like if you just in, if you meet the person and have a conversation and you can instantly kind of feel that you don't have like, you don't like vibe with their personality, you know, like you just, you can tell there might be future issues. Probably just move on right there, you know, move on to a new candidate 
um, look for somebody else. Cause that's what I've ignored that a few times early on and it's never worked out. Like, I, you know, like I've just been kind of desperate for help. Like I need somebody, screw it. I'll hire them, have them help. And then, you know, like a couple weeks into it, it's like, this is really not working out. Um, and it's just, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes you can see those things early on and it might be a good idea just to steer clear right from the start. <laughs> um, that's one of my t things of advice, I guess. But um, yeah, Tommy, you want to go with anything? Well, the last thing is, I mean, get involved with stuff like this, you know, get involved with other people's spinal cord injury, you know, so that you, and, and, and use those, exhaust all those avenues first before you even go into Craigslist. Call all your friends, say, hey, you know, do you, have, do you know any caregivers or do you have a caregiver that needs more hours or a, a friend of a caregiver that, you know, that, that may be available and always be, you know, have you have your, your, you know, your name out there when I mean, it comes time like that, you know, with other other quads and people with spinal cord injuries or, you know, people involved in that type of community. But uh, and then just treat them right. Treat them right. You know, do do do, do nice things for them as well. Once in a while, you know, um, whatever you can. I mean, I definitely, you know. I, you know, I give Christmas bonuses. I do all that type of stuff. You know, yeah, I mean, that just, that goes by uh, far. You know, with maybe a, a little gift here and there when you see something that they've talked about, and hey, I thought about you and just want it or extra food. You know, sometimes they're living from paycheck to paycheck, and so if you have that little extra, you know, think about them, and it it definitely pays off if you can give a little bit, and they'll give a little bit. Yeah. You nice, talk about yeah. food, Bobby. That's the one thing I do include. I mean, like, because I, I do a lot of barbecue, and, you know, steaks and, and burgers, whatever. So I definitely make sure I have food for them, you know. And then if I go to a yeah. restaurant, I always tell them, you know, in that hiring process, I let them know, look, you know, I happen to eat out a lot by chance, you know, especially before COVID. You know, it was just cheaper at the time, to be honest. And, uh, you know, not expensive place or nothing, but it just, you know, I told them, hey, you know, I don't expect you to pay for your food, you know, and, and you know, I, and I'd always pay for their food. Take it, you know, take care of that as a little extra bonus, and and that seems to go a long way as well. Because like a lot of them, like you said, are living paycheck to paycheck. You know, I'm blessed. The one girl that works for me, she had just left her a few minutes ago. She drives 90 miles one way to get wow. her. 90 miles. That's pure dedication. So, and and she's great. She's you know. So I mean, I do whatever I can to keep her. You know, even during COVID, you know, she caught COVID. I I mean, I had no choice but to you know give her paid days off you know i mean I, it wasn't her fault you know so that was that was a little rough financially but you know i had no choice if, if you know if i wanted to keep the good ones you know and they remember those things you know so they remember those things so yeah no it helps you know. to build that relationship and that trust with somebody over time for sure um you know I, I do have one question for you tommy and before we wrap up i i don't know if this can be a long but you have caregivers you know, 24 hours, you know, especially when you're going out and they're driving you. So when you get to a place, let's say like, you know, I've been with you on many boards. And so like you get to a board meeting or you get to a support group at a hospital when we were going, uh, how do you deal with, you know, letting, you know, do they just stay in the car or you, how do you, you know, how does that all work? I was, you know, when I see you and then all of a sudden I see you then all driving away with them, I'm always like, Man, what was that person doing for the last couple hours here, you know? Right, right. I mean, you know what? I have those conversations in the hiring process because, like, you know, especially in the past, I was involved with a couple of different boards. I, You know, I'm very active in the community and I'm very active in life, you know? So I would tell them up front, you know, I go to different places. So there'll be times that, you know, you, you know, I, I'm just going to go in without you and I won't need you. Um, and if you're okay, are you okay with, you know, hanging in the car? You know, this the job includes part of that. You know, if there's certain art shows that, you know, or even concerts I'm going to, and I've got to take, you know, I, I'll bring them into certain concerts or stuff like that. Turn them on to different things that, you know, as kind of like a thank you. You know, I mean, I've been blessed. i got a lot of you know, musicians, you know. A back show experience for somebody is huge. You know, if they get to do something, that, they, they do stuff fun that, you know, they never would do in life. You know, so I like to try to include stuff like that if possible. But I definitely... Um, talk to them early on the onset that you won't always be with me you won't always be expected to nor will you always be invited to come into certain situations so that it, so it's not awkward like hey you know hey, oh, by the way you're going to be waiting in the car while I'm going to this you know beautiful event or whatever you know I mean so they know it in advance I mean and I got some character that, that you know she likes going to places but she has no problem 
hanging out in the car, talking to friends on the phone, uh, or, or watching a movie on the phone, whatever like that. You know, or I'll give them money, you know, say, you know, if you want to run down the street, go get something to eat, whatever you want to do at this point. You know, just know if I text you, if there happened to be an emergency, God forbid, hopefully there's never, which few and far between, you know, yeah. just being, you know, the distance where, you know, if I needed yeah. you, you could come back, you know. Also, Don't I think you can do a run, head. you know, of uh, Instacart or something like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Right now, I do have a deal where I have hired somebody just to get me into this hyperbaric chamber. And so the deal was come help me in, you know, and then go do, you know, I knew she did Instacart. It's somebody we know. It's a family friend. And she goes and does Instacart for her hour and a half. You know, I'm like, don't do too many orders or too big of an order, but you know, so, right. and then she comes back, you know, that's how we, you know, it was perfect for her that, you know, instead of that's sitting awesome. here for two hours, it's just, you know, she can go do something like that and that worked. But, you know, and, and my wife just doesn't leave in case something was not going right in there or I was having disro. Like today, right. I towards the end, it was right at that two hour mark and, uh, you know, I had to pee <laughs> a little like, here, let's let's start to decompress and let me have some fresh air because when you're in there it's it's claustrophobic and i mean you do have oxygen but you know it's stuffy in there so it was nice to get it open and then five minutes later she showed up so it wasn't too bad wow. that's cool let's well, see you brought it up in advance about that and i just saw a question come up somebody said their caregiver was late for an hour with no apology no anything yeah when I hire somebody, yeah, kind of. I right away make that clear. If you're going to be late more than 10 minutes, please send me a text so I don't yeah. have to worry about whether or not you're coming. If it's under 10 minutes, no problem. But if it gets beyond 10, send me a text, you know, and tell Same. me what's going on. So that I need, I know whether or not I need to uh, make arrangements for somebody else to come. But don't, I mean, especially not an hour, hour and a half. Don't expect me to be laying around. Uh, wondering yeah. if you're coming or not, and then and then you come with no apology. I mean, I would just politely have a good conversation and say, maybe, maybe we haven't had this conversation in the past, but if we're not one, if you're going to be more than 10 minutes late, can you please send me a text or pick up the phone? I mean, I, I prefer a yeah. phone call, you know, because then there's no, you know, miscommunication well, or misinterpretation of a text. I always said to them when I first hire, and this goes for, and I've been a supervisor for many years and saying to my staff, Hey, if it's five minutes to the time that you were supposed to be here, I, I deserve a text because you know where you're at and you're not going to be here in five minutes. So that means, you know, you, you should be first thing setting up as a text. Like you left, you left the house a half an hour late. That means, you know, so before you get in your car, yeah. just let me know, please. you know, certain things like that. But I'm just saying if it, if we, we have the set up to be here at six, six a.m and you, you know you're gonna be uh, past that 6 a.m., just give me a, a, a heads up before you leave, you know, if you're still coming. So, I mean, that's, I, I've, I've laid down those ground rules and I'm pretty, you know, one thing I ask, I said, this is my time and this is your time. The, the quicker you get here, the quicker we can get done and you'll still yeah. make the same amount of money. Exactly, and that's what I, one of the main things I stress in the like my first conversations with them is that reliability factor like i am very much counting on them to be here for my care and if they don't show up that's going to pr not only probably screw that day but potentially like a week because my whole stomach and bowel care is just going to be off track and hard to recover from um so stuff like that's hard you know and that, that's one of the things i stress right off the bat is reliability reliability okay. yeah if they're going to be late call me um if you're somebody that's prone to being to calling out regularly like please tell me that from the start so <laughs> i can like move on to another candidate but uh, one it sounds like that lady was probably he was waking her up um but great stuff i know dale said um try to hire someone yeah. with experience because you don't want to be the first two i actually had the first opposite experience. i hired i hired a few people beforehand that didn't know anything and i was like i think that's better because then they don't know what they're walking into and so i i just they were like oh okay okay i get it you know and then 
they're like, okay, this is not so bad because now they're fresh. You know, nursing is new to them. So they're not burned out on it by taking care of people. I always found that a little bit better, but I'm sure it worked for Dale. I think that's our Dale, right, uh, Sean? Yeah, that's Dale. That's so, from rugby. That's Dale. Yeah. Uh, what's up, oh, Dale? Okay, yeah. still so, here, hey, but... Dale, what's up, bud? And then uh, I know uh, Christina said, unfortunately, I think professionalism doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, in some ways, yeah. I, I hear you. And uh, it's sad. You know, people are just they don't care anymore. Like, I, I see that in the work area so much these days. It's just like, wow, you, you just don't care that you're, you gotta go get a paycheck. Like, yeah, where do you get no, your that's money? People, honestly, nowadays people don't care. Like Christy said, the, the professionalism is just people, like right now, You there's a, there's a lot of free money out there. There's a lot of like more jobs than people trying to get them at the moment. So people are just kind of like picky and like, whatever, I don't really care about your job. And like, you have to get somebody that genuinely cares about helping people, I think, like that actually, that, yeah. like, you know, ha has that mentality where they are a caregiver at heart kind of thing. Um, yeah. Well, I know we got to wrap up, Sean, in, in that hour. I want to thank, you know, Tommy for stopping by. Uh, remember, thanks for everyone. Uh, getting into the chat and let us know what your thoughts are and those good tips. Great to see Dale and Connie and then all of our other regulars, how I roll and Celtic and everybody that contribute today. Uh, definitely give it a thumbs up. Like if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Uh, hopefully you come back each week. If not, it's always available for you to watch whenever. We have uh, great sponsors that help us out. Sean, you want to talk about our great sponsors? Um, yeah, I can do the sponsors again. Uh, so we have our sponsors are Mobility Professionals, who is a mobility specialist here in Southern California. Um, they're an awesome company, awesome people. They have one of our quad friends that works for them. They do a lot of stuff to help the community out here locally. Um, just good people, good customer service. Give them a call. They can set you up with a wheelchair, commode chair, any of that type of stuff. And then also their sister company is Urology Professionals, which Urology Professionals is a nationwide company. Uh, they're, they're national, so you can get catheters anywhere in the country. If you need catheter supplies, um, they can hook you up, give them a call. Like I said, great customer service, great people. All the people that work there are so friendly and nice. They always come out to events and support us. And without their help this year, we would have never been able to travel to all these abilities expos and stuff we're doing. So very appreciative to our sponsors. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. So. Check them out. Information's down below in the description. Um, and uh, shouting out that we have our last expo of the year coming up. In three weeks, we'll be in Phoenix for the expo. So if you're out in Phoenix, Scottsdale area, come check us out. Come hang out. We'll be at the expo all weekend. Hopefully, Bobby will be making it with his health uh, Cross our stuff. Fingers. But yeah, yeah. but um, we're hoping that. But yeah, thank you guys all for watching. We appreciate you. Uh, Tommy, thanks again hey, for, for hanging out with Sean, us. Sean, I don't know. Um, we just got one. It's kind of a good question. And I, before we oh. wrap up, if we can just take about three minutes. And how do you guys get about uh, go about getting uh, caregiving hours approved? And I think you you go by collecting your own money and then handing it out. Is that correct? So, oh no, for me, so I actually do get IHSS. So I get IHSS hours and my grandma actually just collects those hours as a caregiver. And then since I'm only getting two hours a day, we just pay them the cash 20 an hour out of that money. So it's not, they don't give us 20 an hour. Like it's basically an hour and a half of that money per every hour that I have worked. Um, but that uh, is just kind of how we have to do it. And uh, that's, that's a state agency, IHSS, in-home supportive services. I believe they have uh, stuff like that in almost every state. I believe it should be in most states. Um, you can get caregiver help. Um, you just have to contact your social worker um, and uh, see if they can maybe help you out with that. Um, but yeah, that, that is a great program and that's how I get most of my caregiving money um, for and for I And I'm care. sure we can do a whole nother segment off uh, IHSS and you know how to go about getting those hours approved and you know definitely when you have somebody coming out and evaluating you, you play as weak as you can and all that good stuff so 
I'm sure we can yeah. do a whole nother show on that. We can do one of those. I just don't want to get in trouble and have somebody from IHSS watch. Yeah. <laughs> but, so maybe we'll keep that on the download. That'll be a private Zoom one for our friends that want to sign up. <laughs> uh, but thank you guys all for watching. We appreciate you. Uh, we'll see you next week. And actually, Brianna will be on Thursday with a women's show um, with the regular girls that are on um, every month. So check them out on Thursday. 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Daylight Time, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, check us out next week. See you guys later. Live to roll, everybody. Tommy, thanks so much. Yeah, thank for you, Tommy. Us. You're the man, bro.